Um. 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 Tekton was an influential figure for us Ark Knights players. If you're unaware of who he is, he was one of the first few content creators of Ark Knights who was especially entertaining. His videos were something that Ark Knights players can look forward to on a regular basis. However, he had left the game a long while ago. Love or hate him, he definitely left an impact on most of us. He was one of the main reasons why I started playing Ark Knights, the reason that I stayed in Ark Knights, and the reason that I can make this video for you guys today to tell you why Ark Knights is the best gacha game that you can ever play. I'm Fukikaze, I've been streaming on Twitch for a year now and still relatively new to the YouTube scene. Nice to meet you, nice to have you here. If you are new to the channel, it will be great to have you subscribe. Before I begin, just a disclaimer, I'm not sponsored in any way to make this video at all. It would have been great, but honestly, I'm just sharing my heartfelt gratitude for this game of Ark Knights. When using the word best in the title, it sounds like I'm going to compare it to other gacha games, but I don't think that it's fair that I do that because right now I'm only concurrently playing one other gacha game which is like Genshin but I only log in once a month so that I can remind myself how good Liyue music is. Isn't that just beautiful? I have played many other gacha games in the past prior to Ark Knights but nothing ever hooked me longer than 3 months. Whereas for Ark Knights, I've been playing it every single day for a year. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys 4 points on why I think Ark Knights is uniquely a brilliant gacha game that you guys should be trying. I'm not going to list them down, but you can see the 4 points at the timestamp or in the description of the video so that you can just enjoy the video. It's pretty, it's a pretty packed of a video. <laughs> Without further ado, let's begin. Let us start with the first point. When you first enter the game, it looks like a very innocent tower defense game, except you upgrade it with gacha elements. While it doesn't seem like there's any more to that early on, as you play through the tutorials and learn about the classes of the operators, you get fed, bit by bit, about the mechanics of the game. Each step of the way, the game either teaches you on a tactic in their tutorial stages or makes you discover strategies by yourself, depending on the operators that you own early on. Once you've completed a stage, you're given the option of auto-deploying, which lets you farm the materials the stages provide. This saves so much time for a busy person like me to just have a game running in the background as I do my work. That's the reason why I do not play Genshin Impact as much compared to Ark Knights. The time required to play Genshin is just too grindy for a busy person like me. Compared to Ark Knights, I can just log in twice or thrice within the day, get my emulator running in the background, get all the materials I need to collect. The game managed to infuse real-time playing with idle gaming together, and the blend is just too well done. If you don't like the idle aspect that much, then you have practice permits in the game. 30 in a day, that would take at least over an hour and a half to actually use them up within a day. That allows you to re-enter the stage and try it out again with an improved or whole new strategy to fill your time daily. In your maybe even more extended free time, you can read about the game story or the character stories that you have unlocked, or go about assessing every character's skills to see whether you want to build them. The beauty of Ark Knights is that it rewards you for thinking and not for how much money that you spend in it. It is not a game whereby you need the best characters or every character to clear content, but rather one where you have to think through your placements for victory. No matter the time that you may take to complete a stage, the victory is meant to give you a great sense of achievement. You could resort to guides, but if you're overly reliant on them, you end up breaking away from what's the most feel-good way to play this, that is to discover something new every playthrough. Let me show you something funny. One of Kyostin's most watched video is TR15 in Chapter 3. TR15 gives you a fixed set of operators that you can work with, and somehow, nearly 200,000 people found themselves struggling with this stage. If you scroll through the comment section, you have people who would write, This tutorial was harder than 3-3 for me. Tutorial stage felt like a frustrating waste of time. It's not really teaching you to refund vanguards to deploy stronger units. It's asking you to figure out a tower of Hanoi-esque order and placement. The fact that 100,000 people needed this guide tells us that this was a bad tutorial. The game is just too hard to have fun now. They need to offer lower difficulty versions of the missions for players like me. The game being designed to force you to have to redeploy units is freaking stupid and should never be a requirement in this game. 
I hate it. If you get frustrated at thinking in this game, you're not going to enjoy this game, especially when that's what is supposed to make this game so damn good. The primary condition of playing and then enjoying this game is that you're willing to learn the mechanics of the game, to take every new finding as an accomplishment, something that comes at no price at all, free of charge. Otherwise, while this is what I consider as a top tier mobile game, I wouldn't even recommend to you if you don't have that patience. Let's get to my next point of how much of the game really is free to play or is it in fact a pay to play game. If you cannot pay money in this game now, is your game experience ruined? The answer to that is no. This game is perfectly playable without paying a single cent. The base requirement of the game is to have a balanced set of operators by the time we hit about player level 60 or 70. That would mean building about an equal number of the classes, so there are 8 classes in the game. So long as you have 2 of each of the classes built and they are just at elite 1 maximum, not needing the elite 2, some elite 2 would be nice, you would have a smooth enough time to clear the content in the game. If you feel like the game is trying to milk your money because there are so many 6 stars or because of the limited banners, then it's all on you to make yourself feel like shit if you don't get them because you do not need 6 stars at all. Highest rarity in Arc Knights does not address the need for level clearing but rather boost the level of fun over here because they have very powerful kits. They can lower the amount of thinking required when playing each stage. Without them, you can still play the game with the bare minimum. Kilstein and Ekogen have often shown how you can play this with low rarity units that are completely free, easily obtainable, and buildable. And Dr. Silvergun is very quick to post many of his surprising 4 star rarity runs. Albeit, they are maxed out in levels which most people don't often do. The point here is that any squad that you own in the game can basically do anything so long as they are a balanced build. Of course, I'm not saying that this is a game where you do not care about the cream of the crop. They're meant to be bonuses to feel happy about whenever getting them, and the drop rates of them are actually brilliant here. This gacha game has a beautiful probability rate of 2% on the 6 stars and 8% on 5 stars, which is a lot better than the other games. If luck isn't on your side, then there is a pity system in the game, whereby the rate is further increased by 2% per pool for the 6 stars after the 50th pool. You are bound to obtain maybe 4-5 to five 6 stars within 1-2 months of playing, and they are enough to enhance your gameplay. If you don't obtain your high rarities from headhunting, you may even encounter them when you do recruitment. Recruitment has a much lower drop rate, but still holds a possibility. The last possible way for getting 6 stars is by certificates, which you can get from pulling a lot within this game, and you can trade 180 of them for a desired 6 star that rotates bi-weekly according to the standard banner. It's really easy to get into this game, and then it comes to a question of what about the money? Don't need to pay in this game, so I won't want to anymore? Not exactly that as well. There are two primary reasons why I see people paying in this game. The first is that they are collectionists, or that they just really want the 2D PNGs or the strongest operators really badly. The other reason is our pure love and support for the developers. The developers are working very hard on keeping this game extremely welcoming and at the same time giving what players want. Recently in Arc Nice Global, most players have always thought that we will never encounter any collaboration events due to the lack of support from our developers. This turned out to be untrue as they recently surprised us with a WWF collaboration which we thought would never happen and remain as a CN exclusive. While it remains highly unlikely that the KFC collaboration will arrive to EN due to licensing issues, but the chance of the Rainbow Six Siege one coming is pretty high. That sounds nice. But I've got two more stories for you. During the CN second anniversary livestream towards the end, the developers had openly declared to the players on the number of new operators they will release within the in-game year, including openly stating that there will be three new limited operators with the exclusion of any potential collaborations. They publicly announced what players can expect for a whole 12 in-game months, which I don't think that's something other gacha games actually do. The greatest example of how much care the developers take would be during the interview for the Rainbow Six Siege and Arc Knights collaboration. Lowlight, the main producer of Arc Knights, was asked why his company picked Rainbow Six Siege, in which he answered, so, 
多东西还是得想一想怎么做。就现在心情肯定很高兴嘛，就毕竟是我自己也也挺喜欢 EB， 然后也挺喜欢这款，就是阿六这款作品嘛，自己也玩。觉得阿六这种这种级别的作品，属于比较让人眼前一亮的吧。然后大家也会觉得我们可能会去和日系的一些作品去做联动嘛，就是。嗯，我是觉得那个就是我们我们这个点子其实应该挺挺不错的。He shared that he was committed to ensure that the R6 characters can weave in very well with the storyline of Art Nights and not be something that is detached. He even played the game himself to come up with ideas on why the R6 characters would be relevant, which this was very evident. The Rainbow Six Siege characters have very elaborated character stories, as well as a special event that has a whole written storyline. For players to enjoy, and see how they are supposedly connected to the Arc Nights universe. Even from this interview alone, you can feel how radiant and kind Low Light is. Something that I really admire about him, which I hope he will stay within the Arc Nights development team for long. Anyways, last situation to share. In CN, there was backlash for a particular past event. Back in Obsidian Festival rerun, CN players got really, really annoyed when they released a new operator. Tons during a rerun event. The anger factor that comes from this is that there were very little rewards for players who already completed the event. The banner came right after the anniversary banner for W, so many players felt that they had very little room, resources, or time to roll for a chance to get tons. Unlike global players, CN players are not gifted with the ability of six months of banner clairvoyance, meaning to say they can't prepare for what is the next event to come months ahead. To respond to the players, the developers actually extended the banner duration beyond the usual of two weeks, two three weeks, and at the same time also gave a ten times hit hunting permit during the next banner, which was an Inactus one. Arc Nights global players also received the same benefits. At the very end, the producers have also stated that they will never let this situation happen ever again. Why do we pay for Arc Nights despite being so free to play friendly? Because the developers deserve it. You can feel the love, care. And dedication that is being done in the making of this game, the developers are taking immense care of the players. Coming from someone who has spent money in the game, I can say that I have no regrets, and in fact, they are the best game purchases I've made throughout my entire gaming time. Adding on a bit about some related stuff to this point, you can really see that they aren't making it so harshly that you have to pay in this game. As Paul Rizzo mentioned in his video, they will literally put payment options. In the small bottom left corner of the main menu, when you log in, you are not swarmed with payment options, and you are not constantly pestered with pop-ups that suggest that you spend some money now. I agree with Paul Rizzo on this as well. There are games with questionable art where you can see that they are really making their sales from the PNGs. This game has less of that, and more of elegance, characters that actually have style, something that makes them look cool and respectable. It's a bit reverse psychology, maybe. But when the game tempts you less to pay for them, you get incentivized to love the game more and actually pay for them instead if you can. Paying for this game will help you to build more operators at a quicker pace, allowing you to have more options to experience, more team combinations to try. I highly recommend to anyone to at least get the best value of a monthly card, and then see how much you want to devote into this game. And again, if you can't, it is perfectly fine to enjoy it as it is. Without paying. The final part is to cover how this solo game experience isn't as solo as you think it is. Games leverage on the social power it can bring, the power of bringing people together into an objective or a cause. PVP games do that perfectly because you're playing with other people, you're interacting in some way. But Arknights doesn't have that, and I don't think it ever should. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy competitiveness in a game. If not, I wouldn't have created a community game mode where you can PVP other Arc Knights players for fun, but it should never be in this game, because it will be the recipe for inviting toxicity into the game. The moment PVP comes in, where people play for stakes or rewards or for titles, the game experience is ruined. It doesn't appear as friendly anymore, and it might then further emphasize on the need to be paid to win. Then, if we look at the current state of Arc Knights, it will feel lonely now, wouldn't it? We do have a friends list and a coming co-op mode, but you can never message other players, only sending clues and visiting their base. Which, finally, even after two years, Arknight's base is still a beta thing. The thing is, 
that's where content creators and community creators come in. He can only like, can't, can't, can't. Ah, the, you know the skill one, the can't, can't, can't. Ah, the f time, time to smash her. Time to smash Talula. Content creators help to bring people together to feel more involved in the game. And when Twitch, YouTube, or Discord communities are set up, they can then serve as a platform for people to connect and chat, discuss about the game, about the things that happen, and why they adore this game so much. I've been streaming on Twitch for more than a year now, with my Discord community active as well, and I think most people have found the game so much more enjoyable with at least a figure, that is myself, who can present what makes the game so good. And I'm not alone on this. There are so many new content creators popping up, even when the game seems to be slowly dipping in relevance, with people like Sessif, Tsugu, Zafeng, Ayuanian, Serzia, Holorisu, Dios Opinion, Texas My Pillow, much of the Arknights meme creators, and we can't forget the big guns like Lucky, Chenjoshi, Killstain, Echogen, Dreamy, Takdes, 25th Night, Neko Kitsune. Alright, that's a very long list. The point is that it's a huge family of Arknights creators, and without having been involved in the community to know people who plays the same game, and having these people to then become my friends, I don't think I would have been so glued to this game as much. And that's why I advise you to start supporting more creators by subscribing to them, watching their videos, and joining their communities. You're most welcome to watch me on Twitch and also join my Discord. In any case, if you've never played this game before, you should. There's so many other good points that makes this game my best, favorite game ever. But I leave those for you to discover why you would love the game even more in your playtime. Hector may not have been the perfect content creator in the past, maybe because not everything he shared was the picture-perfect explanation of you. He got too much unnecessary beating from the Arknights community, and the pressure may have been pretty immense. He seems to be having a wonderful time in Genshin now, but with his departure from Arknights, many felt that they lost a figure that they can look up to when playing the game. Sincerely, I wouldn't have stayed in this game if it weren't for Tecton being around, being the loud fun boy he is, and also if it weren't for just how well built this game is. I'm making a commitment to be a content creator that you guys will enjoy listening to. Someone who works my hardest to present properly verified facts and opinions towards anything that happens in the game. These are the reasons why Arknights is so good and that why you should play it. And I'll see you in my next video.